Let's take a look at another example. We want to solve the following equation. 6x minus 2 equals 3 times parentheses 2x plus 1 minus 4. To solve this equation, we're going to use the same technique we used in the last example. We are going to isolate x on one side of the equation. In order to do that, we need to eliminate it from one side. We can't have x on both sides of the equation. We need to eliminate it from one side. But we can't even do that yet because one of our x's is stuck inside of a parentheses. So the first step here is to get this x out of the parentheses by distributing the 3. So when we distribute the 3, the result will end up being 6x plus 3 on the right-hand side. So ultimately, we end up with the equation becoming 6x minus 2 equals 6x plus 3. That's from distributing the 3. And then the minus 4 just gets copied down. Now we could eliminate x from one side of the equation and try to get it just on the other side. But before I start moving things from one side of the equation to the other, I like to have everything simplified first, because otherwise it can get kind of out of hand. So before we move the x's around, let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side. We have a plus 3 and we have a minus 4. Those are like terms, so let's combine those together. 3 minus 4 ends up giving us negative 1. So we're going to write that as a minus 1 on the right-hand side. So we end up getting 6x minus 2 equals 6x minus 1. Now, we're going to eliminate x from one side of the equation. I will choose to eliminate it from the right-hand side. So to get rid of the x from the right-hand side, I would need to subtract a 6x from the right-hand side of the equation, which means I need to do the same thing to the left-hand side to keep the equation balanced out. So we have to also subtract 6x from the left-hand side, and we unintentionally end up canceling it out from both sides of the equation. Right? Our intention was just to get rid of it from the right-hand side, but it ends up getting canceled out from both sides of the equation. And the result ends up being just a negative 2 on the left-hand side and a negative 1 on the right-hand side. And the variable has just completely disappeared. Now, when this happens, it can be a little bit disconcerting because that was our whole focus, was getting x on one side. Now the x isn't even there. So whenever that happens, you have a special case. This is either going to be an inconsistent equation that has no solution, or it's going to be an identity that has an infinite number of solutions. And the way you decide which case it should be is by looking at this result that we just got. The variable was eliminated, so the variable disappears, and the resulting statement that we get is actually false. Negative 2 does not equal negative 1. If the resulting statement is false, that means our original equation is always false as well. No matter what value we choose to plug in for x, it will always come out false, meaning there will never be a solution to that equation. So if your variable disappears and the resulting statement is false, then there is no solution to that equation, making this an inconsistent equation. If, however, the resulting statement is true, then you would have an identity. There would be an infinite number of solutions in that case. Right? So if the variable disappears and the resulting equation happened to be true, then that equation would be an identity and there would be an infinite number of solutions to that equation. So I'm not going to do an example of that type, but that's how you would recognize if it were an identity. Um, so to summarize, if the variable disappears and the result is false, there is no solution and the equation is inconsistent. If the variable disappears and the result is true, then the equation is an identity and there are an infinite number of solutions to that equation.